Good evening. Uh, the Toronto Raptors lose. You can see Indiana Pacers, 140-123. Game doesn't really matter except for the draft implications. I also had a nap before the game, so that's why it also doesn't matter because I couldn't, I couldn't find my form during this game. I, a little acid reflex, couldn't hit the coffee like I usually would. Didn't want to take any caffeine pills, but um, at least we got the Javon Freeman, the first quarter with Javon Freeman Liberty getting 16 points in the first quarter, if you had that on your scouting report. I had a lot of fun watching the Bally Sports Indiana broadcast. They were doing like ball don't stop type coverage for the Raptors fringe players early on. They were like, Javon Freeman Liberty is a problem. He is crafty and needs to be in the scouting report. They said RJ Barrett was a Canadian from Canada. Not that RJ is a fringe player. Um, who else did they have? They had a, they had a, they had a bunch of... Uh, Jay, they're like they got Jalen McDaniels. This guy is long. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody more excited. I think they were building up for a way because these broadcasts always have to justify to their listeners why their team is losing to the Toronto Raptors. And in uh, in this one, it was kind of like it. It was the, the setup was these. They just got you know fourteen guys that can really go and can really hoop but things kind of return to normal the be- the the first bench then actually was like okay but then i think in the second quarter the pacers bench really started going off tj mcconnell lighting it up from 10 feet that the the pacers most potent offense right, was ob top and dunks and tj mcconnell 10 foot mid-range shots uh, Raptors doubled Pascal uh, quite a bit early on. Kind of got the ball out of out of his hands, and that seemed to work. And then, uh, yeah, JFL gets nine. He had like nine of the first eleven points. He looked he looked really good with the starters. I think they were kind of like obviously players are going to play better with the starters. You see that with. Grady especially, but yeah, he just he just is just like really on a heater. I think he ended the game with like eighteen points and sixteen of them were in the first quarter. He was scoring from like everywhere, hitting threes, mid ranges, drives. It it looked otherworldly. It was like, wow, I guess it's a good thing I woke up from this two hour two hour nap. Um Pacers four turnovers in the in the first four minutes. And this is like like this has happened the last three or four games where the other team just like doesn't show up at the beginning of the game and the Raptors just randomly go on like a they go up like sixteen to three or something. That just seems to happen a lot lately. The the Pacers waited it a little bit though. They waited until like the second quarter to to kind of wake up and I thought their defense really woke up and, and um I thought Pascal had a lot of energy. The, uh, the stadium was pretty quiet. Only three games left in the season. This was the last home game. Stadium was pretty quiet, so you could hear all of Pascal's like, ah, and like, hey, yo. You could hear all of those. And he was kind of chirping with Kelly a little bit, which was, which was kind of funny. And then uh, – Wara and Siakam were kind of chirping a little bit. So, yeah, Siakam was, Siakam was fired up as usual. Uh, McDaniels, yeah, the broadcast really liked him, but he had a, he had a few, kind of, uh, few kind of funny plays. Uh, Williams missing at the rim, that was kind of funny. But, yeah, JFL, 14 points in the first quarter. And I kind of, you kind of knew at the end of the first quarter. So the, final, so the first quarter is kind of this, like, meme the the quarter in general was and then JFL just randomly going off but then you have a final play that kind of was like the if you guys watched the March Madness tournament there was a Florida Atlantic game in the first round where uh, their guard John L. Davis just like dribbled up the floor and didn't really seem to know how much time was left on the clock and and um Aura and McDaniels executed that pretty brilliantly. They kind of fucked around and 
we're dribbling it and passing it, kind of frolicking like like schoolboys. And then all of a sudden, right in the midst of the frolicking, uh, it was really awkward. It was really awkward. It was like they weren't even thinking about shooting. It was just it was. The, I mean, if you combine McDaniel's and Juarez basketball IQ, I mean, you would you would like maybe get like a like a Stanley Johnson maybe if you combined them. But even that's it's probably a stretch. A little Bruce Brown revenge. It's nice to see that he can still play basketball. I wasn't really hadn't really been aware of that. It's nice to get a reminder. Uh, every, you know, every time they play the Pacers, that oh yeah, he can. He knows how to play basketball, so that's that's fun. Uh, yeah, Pacers, Pacers really just picking up the offensive rebounding in the second quarter, leading to a bunch of uh, transition plays with Halliburton, with Siakam, with the bench, and I guess like the only actual, <laughs> the only like actual thing from this game that I noticed that's like meaningful or useful, and I've noticed it. A little bit, but I feel like this game I really noticed them more was RJ using his right hand a lot more. Because the book on him has always been like, you know, he's going left, he's going left, he's going left. Everybody on the Knicks is left-handed, so you just, like, program that into your brain. I felt like in this game, he was using his right a lot more frequently. Obviously not from, like, I'm talking within, like, five feet of the basket or seven feet from the basket. Like, he's not taking right-handed three-pointers or anything. But also, he had a couple right-handed passes to cutters that were really nice. So that's something to keep an eye on because I think if that's probably the big one of the bigger limitations to his game is always going left. So to see him be a threat uh, going right, that was, a, that was a cool development. I don't know. Did anybody, anybody else notice any uh, actual, <laughs> actual, like, uh, useful development things. I guess like the Freeman Liberty. Can you count that? I don't know to because once the lineups kind of reorganized and Freeman Liberty wasn't with the starters, I feel like he kind of regressed back into into normal. So I don't I don't really know if you could take a ton from the JFL thing. I mean, it's obviously really nice to see, and it was it just looked really bizarre because like all the shots he was making were like they were perfect. They weren't like bouncing and clinging and clanging. They were just like. Swish, 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 swish. Back of the th- back of the throat, back of the throat, back of the throat. It was like, it was like, it was like, cr- it was a crispy three. It was like, qu- like Quickly's threes are really crispy. It kind of had that that crispy punch to it. I I didn't know if I was like watching reality, but again, you know, he was playing with the he's playing with the starting lineup. Obviously, there's going to be infinitely more space for him to operate when he's playing with guys that have a little bit more gravity. So I don't I don't I don't know how relatable that is but you can kind of see why he cooks in the g league from that sequence because obviously um he's going to be playing with the better players and getting more opportunities but then yeah when you get the when you get more of the bench lineups in with him a lot of that space goes away and for a for a guard who likes to drive quite a bit although there were some threes tonight for a guard who primarily drives um having those lanes was was big but uh I don't I don't know. I don't know if like I don't know what you can really take from that. I think the RJ right hand is real. Like that that's going to be against anybody. Um and it it allows him to be a little bit more like you see with Scotty, his ability to finish with both hands makes him so much more threatening, you know, not that he's not threatening enough, but like you know, seven, eight feet from the basket, his ability to shoot with both hands, floaters with both hands, hook shots with both hands. Like it's so much difficult, so much more difficult to guard when you've got a player who goes to the right hand, like, you know, 65% of the time and their left hand, whatever hundred minus 65 is. I'm not, I'm not awake enough to do that math, but you get what I'm talking about versus a player who goes left like 85% of the time. It's, it's, you really have to be on your toes a lot more when you when you're playing at someone who has the dexterity to do that. It just opens up a lot more. Because um, RJ too, I think the right hand would really unlock a lot for him. Just his style of play as well. Like he has a lot of really nice footwork, a lot of pivoting. He gets himself in really advantageous situations. And if you kind of only have a left hand or you only have a right hand, uh, Jordan Poole has a really big problem with this. Where like he gets into a great spot to score, but then his left hand like doesn't exist. 
so he does like weird like oh, i'm gonna and it's like i don't know so it looks cool when it goes in but i mean you're driving 30 out of 30 nba head coach is crazy if you <laughs> if you are in a situation where i mean Kyrie took it to the extreme uh a couple weeks ago and he did the left-handed floater over Jokic from eight from 18 feet that was like really taking it to the extreme but yeah I thought that was a noticeable thing from RJ and then the passing with the right hand as well so I'd be interested to see if they've been him and Drew Hanlon are, are uh, working on working on the right hand a little bit but yeah TJ McConnell cooking from 10 feet Obi Toppin just what nine like nine highlight reel dunks tonight and for big por- portions of this game Siakam and Halliburton were on the bench, like in the se- especially the second quarter, first quarter, and Rick Carlisle was like not happy for a bunch of this game. He was got to scream. Him and T.J. McConnell were screaming, not at each other, but like at the team. And it was an ugly first half for them. And then, yeah, they kind of found their found their foot footing. Uh, Kelly Kelly Olynyk just uh, faking out everybody. You really cannot bite on the Kelly Olenek pump fake. He gets a lot of people with those, and the Pacers broadcast was getting frustrated with just how many people are biting on these Kelly fakes. And the funny thing, too, is, like, after he fakes, he doesn't, like, speed up or get excited or anything. I think he's so used to people biting that he just kind of, like, sloths to whatever move he's going to go into or will sometimes do the Damian Lillard oh, you like bought on my pump fake and now you're kind of standing out of position. Going to go up and make contact with you on the shot. A little bit of throwback 2017 Harden basketball. He does that a little bit. He had the the broadcast was not very happy um, with him tonight <laughs> for that. Or not not happy with the the players for for falling for it. Uh, I don't know what happened with Quickly, but Quickly was not uh, in this game. Uh, Abaji with another. I mean, I know his... He's more of a defensive guy, but there there has been just a an incredible amount of like twenty nine minutes, two points type games. Uh, I don't know where the Abaji pick and roll went. That was really cooking last game, and I don't know if I saw one happen this game. It just doesn't really seem to be that involved in the offense, which is odd because there's so many injuries. Uh, o for two for three tonight. I still don't remember like. Abaji making a three this season, maybe outside of a couple corner threes. Trash clips. What's uh, Oshai Abaji's three point percentage since joining the Toronto Raptors? It's got to be. It's got to be like not safe for work. Uh, but yeah, Freeman Liberty. You know, he got he gets you twenty points on ten shots. Not bad. Gets to the free throw line. Eight rebounds, two assists, a steal. And what you really like about. Freeman Liberty in this game is one turnover. He's had a bunch of, he's had a bunch of like five, four, three turnover games. That sometimes, a lot of the time, almost almost all the time, to be honest, when a combo more of a combo guard is given the keys to be the point guard, it's kind of it can be messy uh, a lot of the time. And I think you kind of clean that up a little bit more today with the with the one turnover. Um, but yeah, the Raptors were just never after like the first quarter. I mean, it's kind of, it's pretty clear what it was. And <laughs> I mean, there's only three games left in the season. Gary had a bit of uh, kind of an off night for him. Oh, for seven from three, the Raptors go five for 21 from three, bit of a throwback to earlier in the year when they had, uh, just, I mean, he really needed quickly in this game to get you like five or six threes to, to get you to something close to respectable, um, Pacers 16 for 45 from three, so it's like league average, which looks incredible compared to 23%. Uh, yeah, uh, speaking of the Pacers, I did put out a Tyrese Halliburton, Gary Trent Jr. video yesterday or two days ago, lost track of time, uh, where Halliburton was like asking, pleading with Gary to like please stop guarding him. It was kind of a kind of a funny moment i chewed in that video for a while uh judd from new zealand gives me a 99 cent tip thank you judd do you have like a question or anything you want me to answer uh judd says alvin sucks bring back leo was it a sports night game tonight yeah i was i was i was tapped in was tapped into the bally sports um i may have randomly woken up today and written 
a 1500 word draft script for a TSN offseason video about TSN dying. I don't know what prompted it. I just kind of woke up and like was angry at TSN for some reason. So I opened my Google Drive and just started typing about how TSN has two of the top 100 sports podcasts in Canada, zero of the top 100 hockey podcasts in Canada, which hockey's like their main thing. And then I yeah, I just I have all these like financial numbers and bits and pieces laying around, but I think I just needed to do a full like TSN is dying video. Um, and I may have a, uh, insane unhinged rants that I filmed for some reason of myself screaming at my television because TSN fucked up their scheduling. It was last year when the Raptors game, they, they, they played like a flag football game on TSN one instead of the Raptors Grizzlies game, which was what was listed on the TV. So I, I was just screaming at my television about watching, having to watch men in flip flops, play football. Uh, MS Chase says JFL he can play rebounds still on a leash and going into the NBA action never dismiss a natural score I mean yeah I've I've been a little bit underwhelmed with him or quite a bit underwhelmed with him in total but yeah you have to look at like the role he's trying to step into and where he kind of came from and what they want him to do uh, and it's like do you want to he, he feels like another Delano Banton if you let him go I think I'm just scarred from every night I check the Portland because uh, I'm I was I was on Portland tank watch. I swear it's every game I check. It's like Delano twenty eight six and eight. It's just like okay, <laughs> I know it's empty, empty stats on a team, but I think also maybe even more importantly than any of that is just like who is the Raptors' backup point guard at this point? I mean, like I, I, there's you can't really there isn't like there's no who's the TJ McConnell of this team tj mcconnell would just run the raptors bench like he would he would be like the bus driver of this of this bench squad uh trash clips aside from free throws and smoking a layup williams looked okay today yeah he had the second shift i think that's the first time he's ever had a second shift they always like put him in yeah he had 14 minutes tonight they always put him in for like two minutes or seven minutes the team gives up like a 20 to nothing run and then he doesn't see the floor again but yeah tonight you know wheel him out there again for a second shift see what he's got he didn't look as bad as before three for eight i mean again with him he's on a 10 day nine rebounds which you love in 14 minutes um i don't even know how you evaluate 10 day players i think probably a lot of it goes to like what they're like behind the scenes and how they conduct themselves and like that's probably like a lot of it we can't really see because yeah when, like on the floor it's like you have no idea really what's it's really rare that like a 10 day just comes in and just cooks but have the Raptors ever had a 10 day just come in and just cook like I can't I'm sure I'm sure it's happened like maybe it's Jeff Dowden the closest the closest version of that um Yeah, people in the chat saying uh, they miss they miss Pascal. Um, yeah, the, you know the Pacers broadcast was very high on Pascal. Didn't didn't say a ton about Bruce Brown, so I don't know. Um, they were bigging up every other Raptor player though, pretty much. But yeah, so what happened with Pascal and uh, Kelly Olynyk? I need to go back and rewatch that. That was like six oh eight. I I feel like I kind of missed that. Like I have to apologize again. T a two hour nap for me is like the equivalent of drinking like 20 beers. Like I just, I am absolutely, I am like, I even thought when I started hitting, when I hit record, I'm like, this might be a 14 minute post game show. Like I am, I am like unbelievably out of it. But uh, yeah, him and him and Siakam, <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but it was maybe the highlight of the, the whole game probably. And I kind of wasn't, I just, I kind of missed the lead up to that. Maybe that could be an off season video. Kind of thinking of some off-season content. Um, yeah, it was really funny because, like, the the layup that uh, Williams missed, Bruce Brown just, like, football tackled TJ McConnell. I can't believe it wasn't a foul. <laughs> just, he just, like, drove him over like he was driving a bus and then passed it to uh, Williams, wide open layup, and uh, missed it. And I, I always judge taller players for missing open layups 
Shouts to Andre Drummond. I don't know if people saw the Andre Drummond, Tory Craig play from the Bulls game earlier today. That'll be everywhere if you haven't seen it. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Guy throws pass off the backboard and not only him, but the guy behind him, Andre Drummond. Speaking of uh, basketball IQ, I guess Andre Drummond, you, you can never turn down a rebound if you're Andre Drummond and he comes up from behind. There's some really funny like close-up screenshots of their faces when they kind of realize that there's two of them going for the same ball. Also some Michael Porter Jr. cookies stuff going around. If Michael, Basically, um, if Michael Porter Jr. offers you a cookie, just do, do, do not accept. Um, just like Seinfeld with the pie, just like, yeah, don't, don't take any cookies from Michael Porter Jr. Don't, I, I probably wouldn't even want to hang out with Michael Porter Jr. He's, um, when I did my Jonte stuff, the, the Jonte stories, uh, Michael Porter was obviously a part of that, uh, a small part of it, but a part of it, uh, nonetheless, being on Jonte's uh, investing website, uh, being on a graphic that included the words lifetime profit, which I don't think a lawyer was uh, consulted with this, and MG, MPJ like promoting it, and I had a bunch of uh, Nuggets fans very upset, very, very upset that I uh, brought Michael Michael into it because Michael is such a good natured innocent boy. So, but but the one thing I will say about him: do not do not. If you run into Michael Porter Jr. on the sidewalk and he's got a box of cookies for you, even if it's like pre-wrapped and everything's everything looks legit, I I just wouldn't risk it. And I'm not talking about like weed cookies either. So, because those I would be completely fine with. So yeah, I don't I don't know how many like I don't know how what else what else what else we got here. OG o, uh, OG Toppin, I guess is OG and an OBOB Toppin combination. With nine, wow, well, I'm out of it. With nine dunks, or something like that. Uh, three more games left. You got the Brooklyn Nets tomorrow. How exciting! And then back-to-back -back Heat games, which actually is kind of exciting because they're like in terms of watching the Heat, <laughs> you know, because they're the games for them are obviously uh, really important. Excited to see what kind of X's and O's the Grandmaster Eric Spolstra has to take on Jalen McDaniels and Jordan Wara. Um, just watched the LeBron JJ Redick podcast, and they're talking about uh, Spolstra hanging out with a football coach so that they could teach Chris Bosch the spread five out type offense. Pretty interesting. Trash clips. I guess we gave up on Kobe Simmons. True. Um,. Yeah, I guess is his is his stint on. I mean, at this point of the season, they have given a lot of ten days out though, so that's like you know respect to them. But that might just be more of a where they're at now, and maybe they'll give him another look or something. Because yeah, he he seemed the most comfortable in that in that position, and like he didn't have any fourteen point quarters, but he just if you took his whole you know all the minutes, he, he probably looked the most. Um, ready i think for the role uh trash clips don't ask mpj what he thinks about women's basketball and fair pay for women um yeah i just i probably wouldn't ask mpj like anything <laughs> uh there's a great clip of him that i put in a Jokic scotty video from a couple of years ago where he was uh he got his car got pulled over and he was like, yo, man, like, we're both black. Like, what are you doing? Like, pulling over another black guy or something. And the guy's like, I'm a Puerto Rican. And then the clip just cuts. Um, yeah, he kind of had the, uh, he did the Bobby Ryan for, like, the sports, women's sports thing. Um, what was that? It was, like, a month ago. And you got the cookie thing. Yeah, he's, he's, uh. And then what it hit, What was his, like, public statement about Jonte? He's like, yeah, I'm highly, highly doubtful that my brother would. Because he can't say that he didn't do it. But he's like, yeah, I'm highly, <laughs> highly doubtful that. Um, by the way, haven't, have there been any Jonte updates? I haven't heard. I was going to cut that video into a short or a couple shorts. Just all the rebounds and passes and stuff. But um, I don't know, man. People in the chat, Pilsi, saying the only reason I checked out this game is because of Pascal. 
Well, at least you got to hear him very clearly. At least on the Pacers broadcast, you could. Stadium was dead quiet. Again, I don't know why the stadium's so quiet. They're playing like Barbara Streisand and like Limp Biscuit. Why aren't people losing their minds for this shit? Jordan War. They got Jordan War and Limp Biscuit playing. Like, why? I don't know why people aren't just like taking their clothes off and going crazy. Um, but you could really hear Pascal in this game. Uh, a lot of audible, a lot of audible sounds. Obviously, uh, you know he he didn't light the world on fire. Sixteen points, but he was really effective in like uh, igniting the offense. I thought for the starters because the bench came in and actually did pretty well. Like without Halliburton and Pascal. Bench came in really operated. You got McConnell 17, Toppin 23, Jackson 11. Um, I mean, you got three bench guys over 10 points. That's pretty good. And then when when the starters came on to kind of ignite the offense, it was a lot of Pascal in transition. Pascal grabbing the rebound and throwing it out of transition or somebody else grabbing the rebound and Pascal finishing in transition. So. Yeah, he was he was really important for them tonight. Um, kind of woke woke those starters up a little bit, and even like you know Nemhard eight points, Neesmith eight points. The starters had a like if you're watching those if you're watching that as a Pacer fan going into the playoffs, it's a little like because again the only real reason to watch these games is if you're a playoff enjoyer and you're looking you're scouting for. Um, you know, just who like the magic only beating the Raptors by 12 points a couple times. Like that's, I'd be horrified if I was a magic fan, I guess they don't really, yeah, it's like their first, it's the first time they've been in the playoffs. So it's exciting for them. Um, but yeah, you've got the, who you got the Pacers on at six right now. So they're just out of the play in. So this is a big game for them. You know, them in Philly, they're right there. 45, 34, 45, 35, they would play the ma- speaking of the magic, they play the magic right now. By the way, Giannis went down with a non contact ankle injury. So those are usually the worst. And as someone with an ongoing ankle thing or things, could feel could kind of feel that. That also adds to my nap. So basically I went to the gym for like five and a half hours yesterday. I just did I just did too much. Did way too much. Kinda knew I was doing way too much, but I was like, you know, nine hours of sleep hydrated woke up today and just um, i'm i'm cooked i think i slept for nine and a half hours and had a two-hour nap but i will recover i will be i'll be back tomorrow i'll be good tomorrow today is uh, i'll be good for the nets game tomorrow if everybody's really excited about that um trash clips i thought his calf just cramped i hope hopefully that's um, hopefully that's because yeah when you're watching the playoffs you want to see all the you want to see all the heavy hitters it, it'll it feel better if Milwaukee loses when he's playing you know it's more satisfying to see like I'd much rather see them lose than him not playing you know what I mean it doesn't hit the same when he's from the bench I don't know does anybody want to talk about Bayern Munich and Arsenal actually, actually watched that Great counterattack by Bayern Munich. Kind of reminded me of Pascal a little bit in transition. Some weird substitutions, but I don't know, man. That's kind of all I have for my uh, for my notes. Uh, what did Kelly Olenek? So the so I don't really know why this is, but I'm not saying it's good or bad, but. For for like a little while there, it felt like Kelly Olynyk was getting 11 assists a game and like 10 or 12 points. Now it's more like he had 22 points tonight, four assists. So the points are going way up. Assists are going quite down. I don't really know what or why. And I don't think there's enough. <laughs> um, like I don't think it really even matters. It's just hard to evaluate stuff at this point when everything's just kind of in flux. So having a team focused channel is brilliant, brilliant idea on my part. Just only talk about one team. And then if it's not going well, you only have the one th- really smart decision on my part. Um, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Gregory says, did you watch the 76 or double OT? I did not see. That's the thing. I watch 
I gotta stay. I gotta stay locked in. I gotta deliver the goods. Um, but what happened in the Sixers game? Let's check that out. Pissed against the Pistons. It went overtime against the Pistons. Are you sure about this? Is this accurate? Joel Embiid, thirty-seven points. Are you saying the Pistons and the Sixers went to overtime? I'm being lied to. Um. Vegan Grass, when's Alex announcing his new gig? I think I'm too tired to go into this. Uh, okay, go back and listen to the last couple sentences of the last banter pod. And I have to be careful here how I word this. Go listen to the last, yeah, go listen to the last couple sentences of the last banter pod and really, like, study the wording, like, Zapruder style. Like, really, really, because there's a lot in the, and there's a lot in there. Um, it's one of those things where, like, you, you, you could really take, yeah, pink hat behind me here is really, she's really jittery in this one. Uh, but anyways, can you give me some can you give me like 14 percent of your energy uh but yeah go listen to those last couple sentences there's a lot in there i think there's going to be uh explosions big bombs big big everything happening massive massive platonic tectonic shit and just seriously zoom in and even listen on 0 0.5 speed if you have to if you're so inclined to really like dig into the meaning between the lines, I guess you could say. I'll let you go on the journey, you know, it's Lord of the Rings episode. So you get to, you get to go on the two towers. I just love the idea of Alex watching Lord of the Rings on like a Stairmaster on a cell phone. Um, it reminds me of when uh, I went to Thailand with only my iPhone four and somebody made me watch The Matrix, which I'd never seen before. And I had to watch it on an iPhone 4. And I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> what was that, 2016? So yeah, I first saw The Matrix in 2016. I was just like, this sucks. It's just really predictable. Like, oh, wow. He's really uh, another movie about a guy who goes against the grain. That's really cool. Um, it's funny how in 99... The Matrix, Fight Club, American Beauty, and Office Space all came out in 99. And they all kind of have like similar-ish messages. And Office Space is just like, just blows the other ones out of the water. Like it's not even close. Like the same, Office Space is the exact same message as The Matrix. It's just such a better movie. Um, uh, Vegan Grass says the bonus episode. Is that what they, I don't know what they call, I don't know what they call their fucking, just the one about the two towers. Uh, Oshai shot, Trash Clips says, Oshai shot 40.9% in his last season at Kansas. Do you think he's just not adjusting to the NBA line or does he need to work on his mechanics? I don't think it's a line thing because that would indicate missing short a lot. He's missing left, right, long, short. Like his misses are not... Like a good example is I think Scotty misses it. Like most of Scotty's misses are short and straight. I feel like OG was was OG was the master purveyor of like almost all the time it would be short and set, which is like that's probably the easiest adjustment. That's just a little bit more. I mean, this Nick's shooting program is really good because it kind of shows you like how there's all these places in your body to get juice from and like everybody's mechanics is a little bit different. Like some people get more juice from their wrist snaps. Some people get more juice from back hinge. Some people get more juice from tricep extension, yada, yada, yada. So it's like, if you're missing short front rim, which would indicate not being used to the NBA line, it's like, okay, you just got to put a little bit more into your legs. You just got to hinge a little bit more. You just got to snap the wrist a little bit more, a little bit harder of a tricep um, extension. With a baji, it's a little bit more frenetic, feels like. So it's probably more of a deeper issue. Wow. 
deeper issue mechanical thing but nothing looks really like nothing's blatantly obvious that's off it's kind of like when grady was really struggling early in the year and people kind of go to mechanics and it's like i think i think with like nba players unless you're talking about like a mark <laughs> markel fultz or like a um but just i don't know some guys just have weird mechanics too like i mean i mean we just saw tyrese halliburton i mean this guy was in the three-point competition tyrese halliburton like when you're shooting a basketball one of my favorite things to like picture is if you've ever been a food runner before and you have to hold a tray of food it's like a really nice thing to kind of picture because the straighter that tray is obviously the better you know the food's gonna sit there um so if you can get that if you can get that wrist back and Halliburton's kind of the perfect example of like he's just got that tray and he's just like flinging that tray at the rim and it it works uh you know Jordan Wara Kel Jordan Wara and Kelly Olynyk have really similar threes where there's just no dip to them kind of Kawhi-esque where it's just like so you would say that's like wrong mechanics the Noah analytics would be like you got to get more pop on that thing but so it's, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to tell with, with Abaji. But yeah, the miss is, because he's only taking like two or three threes a game. But when he first got here, he was, he had like games where he was 0 for 6, 0 for 7, 0 for 8. And yeah, they were, they were left. They were, he would shoot like a, he would shoot a three from like the left wing and it would be like left short. And then he would shoot a three from the corner and it would just be like air ball long. And then he would shoot a three from, yeah, it's just like, there was no, I, or at least I didn't notice like a discernible pattern of like, okay, just need to shift this around a little bit. But I mean, if you shot that in, in at Kansas, um, you would hope he could return to, I mean, like it'd be great if he was a great three point shooter, but I mean, just being league average with his defensive prowess would make him like a, a guy, you know, that you take off the bench. So like, I don't think he's going to be starting next season. Uh, unless he really takes a jump he has like the thing with the baji is like the reason why you kind of take that as a what do you call it I'm, I, I am so fried right now uh a lottery not a lottery what am i a lottery ticket i guess that's not even i don't know you know what i'm talking about he has the profile of someone who could like you don't have to you don't have to teach him athleticism you don't have to teach him length you don't have to teach him defense that right that right there it's like if you can develop a little bit of three point shooting you're going to be a useful player with where the nba is at today that's a very like that archetype um really does really does fit you're not like a roy hibbert or something thinking thinking about roy hibbert from the lebron podcast you know cuz was, that's how you won in 2014 is you you found clever ways to get Roy Hibbert out of the paint you know um, trash clips Sayesh Patel played his best game as a Raptor there you go so this is why this is why you're the MVP of this David Marsh did the Raptors win um yes yes they did they won 169 to 42 against the Indiana Pacers. Bruce Brown had 80 points. Uh, Jamal Freeman Liberty with 37 points, 26 assists, 14 rebounds, 7 steals, 8 blocks. Um, yeah, big, uh, big JFL game. Trash Clip says, I think Kelly was handling the ball a lot more before RJ and IQ came back. That is true, definitely. I mean, that's probably the easy easy thing um no iq in this game and i think like rj doesn't handle it a ton with the st more starting lineup there is kind of there was there have been some point rj is that pat delaney here in the white shirt um <laughs> there have been some rj at point guard but yeah no that that is probably the the it's probably the main the main factor there might be some other granule things like Grand, granule granular like our our players missing you know the because unfortunately with assists it is also determined on if the players are making their shots or not so i don't think that's pat delaney i'm sorry i'm sorry pat um 
not as bad as Will calling him John Delaney and then playing for him as a as a coach. So at least I'm not in that territory. Of uh, yeah, Masai Masai choke slammed a referee. Yeah, Bob Bobby Webster took all his clothes off when they hit 160 points took all his clothes off ran to the court um really excited jumping up and down former cia guy barefoot enthusiast embracing everybody confetti falling from the the rafters um messiah went and like unscrewed the rim the Kawhi shot rim and like put the rim around his neck and was uh choking people out apparently i don't I, I don't know man i need to go back to bed um but yeah the toronto raptors they they uh they lose no garrett temple in this game i don't know what what, what happened with that i don't know so what happened with quickly where did i see what happened with him where did he go trash clips where did he go where's uh Nathan Roberts says, what a wild game. I agree. I Garrett Temple in this game. I don't know what, uh, what, what happened with that. Honestly, what happened here. with Apologies. Quickly? One sec. It's a high, high fidelity television program here. Program. Bobby looks like he'd be a CrossFit guy. Yeah. I could see that. He's got the espresso machine. It probably like brings the espresso machine to CrossFit. And just take shots like in between throwing forty five pound dumbbells to people from across the room. I used to live next to not next to but like around the corner from a CrossFit place. It's just like you guys are paying for this. Like you're paying to get injured and like yelled at and there's a really funny like Marjorie Taylor Green CrossFit video where she's doing I don't even know what you would call it. You know, like when you when you hang off a bar and you do like shoulder shrugs to like loosen your shoulders, but she was like whipping her whole back in like an S pattern. And it's just like the most CrossFit thing ever. It's just like, I, I love how, like I think CrossFit and chiropractors, they kind of keep each other in business because chiropractors are, are kind of the, the shifty ones of the, doctor world profession and then crossfit are like the shifty um fitness people it's like just go to a normal like you go to a normal gym you got your squat rack but you know you, know, you put the bar on the back of your you know you can go on the back you can do a front squat but in crossfit like you gotta like throw it to somebody who's gonna you know catch it um i don't know maybe crossfit's really cool But I don't, I don't think a lot of professional athletes do that kind of stuff. Like during the pandemic, there was a lot of um, like Bradley Beal uploaded a workout. Jimmy Butler uploaded a workout. Uh, Shea uploaded a workout. Uh, Darren Fox uploaded a workout. Who else? And like I watched all of them very closely. Um, and yeah, none of these guys are doing like CrossFit any, like anything. Jimmy Butler is actually putting like resistance bands which is smart around dumbbells doing like incline bench press like so instead of doing whatever he would do i don't know 100 120 pound dumbbells he's doing lower but he's got resistance bands around his like elbows to like lessen the amount of weight that he's you know putting on his muscles if he's doing uh you know extended workouts every day so I don't think they're, I don't think they're doing I don't think they're doing a ton of ton of CrossFit like if, if Anthony Davis was like you know I did a video on the Anthony Davis quote unquote intense workout I think if Anthony Davis was like hey we're uh, we're you know just go over go over and grab the rowing machine and just like uh, throw like throw a ch like throw the rowing machine with a chest pass to someone else in your group. 
Bars filling up a little bit here for the post game show. A lot of people excited. Pink hat, probably most of all. Looks like there's some kind of event here that I gave out uh, t shirts for. Everybody's kind of wearing, so that's fun. Gonna go hang out with these people. Maybe have a nap in the back as this guy plays the acoustic guitar. Uh, Mitch Fearing, Brad Beal's workouts are legit. Yeah, I like his home gym setup. And he goes through the workouts like really slowly and kind of methodical and isn't trying to be like, look at me. It's just like, hey, here's my here's my squat rack. Here's my bar. Here's my, you know, whatever. So go watch, go watch that content. You know, I should really make video like off season. I thought about this before, but I'll get around to it. You know how to shoot behind your head like Chris Boucher. How to dribble off your foot like Jordan Wara. I think I'll make some of them like good, like positive stuff. Like how to, how I don't know, how to shoot like a crispy three like quickly or something. And just do like a five minute video and like how to make your wrist stronger or something. And then couple that with like how to shoot behind your head like Chris Boucher. How to, f uh, how to, fly sideways in transition or how to finish in transition like Gary Trent Jr. But it's just like me jumping off of a dock into uh, polluted Vancouver waters and I get uh, salmonella or whatever the E. coli. I get E. coli in the video. Um, a lot of Tommy Bahama in the room says Pilsey. Yeah, Tommy Bahama uh not a sponsor but could, that'd be a great sponsor um i lost the raptor moments corporate sponsor if people if people remember my uh car crash ads that uh those didn't probably didn't go over well but yeah tommy Bahama would be like a good good sponsor um i remember going to a tommy bahama outlet store in atlantic city new jersey that might be I don't know if it gets any better than that. <laughs> like I, that might be, that might be the highest I've ever reached. Um, low key, kind of like the Atlantic City more than Vegas. I like the board. I like how there's a boardwalk. Vegas, there's no. Vegas is just walking. It's all all you do when you go to Vegas is walk. And Atlantic City, at least you got a boardwalk. Um, Cancun also sucks. I went to Cancun and just found an abandoned golf course and listened to an audio book. It's 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 terrible. It stinks. Like even like Puerto Vallarta. Speaking like Puerto Vallarta is a nice little boardwalk. You can walk around. Cancun's got fucking nothing, man. You're just you're getting into a bus for 200 pesos, and the banter with the bus driver is the only fun you're gonna have. Um, unless you got a Tommy Bahama shirt on, then then you're like these guys here who just rolled up. She's got kind of a camo on. I couldn't see her at first with the camo, but now I do. And, uh, yeah, I guess the the vibe changed a little bit. This is like the Pacers coming on the second quarter and uh, realizing that they do actually have to win this game to avoid a Joel Embiid uh, play-in scenario, which is like I've been thinking that for a long time. Like it's just funny, the team who has to um, – like you got to feel bad for the team in the play-in. But I don't even think the – like, oh, God, do you want to get into this? 48 minutes. I didn't think I would last 10 minutes on this show. The play-in. Let's, let's close with how stupid the NBA is. Um, the play-in is fun when it's happening, but it's almost like a... It's like when you get really drunk, do a ton of MDMA, you put on your best Tommy Bahama shirt, and you come to, a, you come to the Raptor Moments post-game show in your uh, golf cart that you've got outside here. And it's all really fun and great and talking about starting timeshare businesses with people and other Tommy Bahama shirts. But then, but then you wake up two days later and you've chewed the entire side of your mouth is just bleeding. Not enough gum in the world to heal that. And then even when you, you want to chew gum, like this guy right here who just rolled up, it's just like your, 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 your jaw bones are just broken. And that's what the play-in tournament is. It's a drunken MDMA fueled weekend. 
which is fun. But then when you like wake up and a couple of days later, you realize that, hey, there's all this talk about the regular season being boring, that players aren't invested in the regular season. People are like, oh, it's too long. It's 82 games. We've got to cut it down. I agree with cutting it down only to eliminate. And this, I, I apologize. This is very boring. This is like this is like every Bill Simmons, Zach Lowe episode. So I do apologize. We're 48 minutes in. I didn't think I'd get past 10. So this is like bon- this is bonus content for people. <laughs> for people. Um, but now, like, so the regular season, nobody cares about it. How does making 66% of the teams playoff eligible make the regular season more important? And how does rewarding, you know, the Wizards, the Pistons with lottery picks over and over and over again? So you've like, you fucked up kind of on like two big, I mean, just look at soccer, look at football. It's ruthless. You get fucking relegated if you at the bottom, you don't get, you don't, you don't get Victor Wembanyama. You get the next league down. You lose 70% of your revenue. You're not on national television anymore. You don't get Victor Wembanyama. Um, the baseball regular season, people fucking love the baseball regular season, including myself. It's like five months from the playoffs, they're talking, okay, you know, the Blue Jays, they got they got 14 more games against the Yankees, and they got the Red Sox, they got 12 more games against the Red Sox, so they got to go so you know, seven to six against the Red Sox, you know, because there's all these division rivals, because the same teams are playing each other, it's like these mini playoff series, you create these divisional rivalries. Whereas in the NBA, you're just you're just randomly going around everywhere. It's just the fucking like music tour. It's just there's no logic. Doesn't make any sense. There's no rivalries anymore. And then you've got sixty six percent of the teams with a t- shot of the playoffs. So like, why would why would anybody care? You want to fix the regular season? You don't make it shorter. You make less teams make the playoffs, and then you send the bottom teams to the G League. And the top teams from the G League come to the NBA relegation style. Then you've got you could have a you could have a nine oh five versus Raptor game. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. The, the the NBA is so these bottom feeding teams are so babied that it makes the regular season just not matter at the top or the bottom because like you're either like you're guaranteed in the NBA to either make the playoffs or get a great pick. What's the fucking point of even showing up? I just threw a pen really hard. That's my that's that's my Zach Lowe, um, Evan Mobley is a budding two-way superstar clip. Um, my favorite Zach Lowe moment of all time, aside from him like um, chastising all the ESPN producers and stuff, which I do love. Or not really chastising, but giving subtle. He Zach Lowe's hints are very much like Alex's hints. Like you, you really have to be like kind of tuned into it. But if you're on the frequency, you can you can hear the some of the corporate uh, comments. But his my favorite Zach Lowe comment of all time. I can't remember who was on the show, but they're talking about Evan Mobley. This was a year ago or two years ago. This is obviously as a result of uh, Evan Mobley like rupturing both of his Achilles at the same time. Uh, the other night on the uh, game-winning play, <laughs> playing defense. But my yeah, my favorite Zach Lowe moment of all time, and I think this was fresh off of the Evan Mobley is a, a budding to a superstar article that he wrote. Is there was I can't remember what the context of the discussion was, but they're talking about defensive player of the year, and Zach was saying. Like, sure, if you're a big guy, like, this is almost a direct quote. Like, I've almost remembered it. He said, sure, if you're a bigger guy like Bancaro, you can go into Mobley, knock him back three feet, and get your shot off easily. But I don't hold that against him when I'm talking about defensive player of the year. That is basically a direct quote. I wish I clipped it. I maybe have in my captures folder, but I will just, like, never forget that moment. That was, like, the Zach Lowe moment for me. If you've got a big guy like Bancaro, he can go into Mobley, put his elbow in or put his shoulder in, clear three feet of space and get his shot off easily. But I don't hold that against him when voting for a defensive player of the year. I mean, like, it makes sense not to hold that against them for development, player development. Like, sure, you got to get stronger. But, I mean, defensive player of the year. I mean, player awards. What are we? What are we doing? Do we need player awards? Do we need a most? How about least valuable player? 
We need like Razzies. We need like least valuable, like Jalen McDaniels. You win the least valuable player of the. Like, I would watch that. Um, these ladies coming in would watch that. These guys in the white shirt would watch that. Um, Michael Porter Jr. just like throwing up right now. Like, oh, I can't watch. I can't watch. I can only watch men. I can't watch this. I have to be watching men all the time and their knees and their thighs. I can only watch men. If it's not men, I can't watch it. I only need, I can only watch only exclusively again don't don't accept any of the cookies don't take any cookies from um pill c says relegation that's spicy i mean we like like the washington wizards how like how is this not a g league team could you like could you imagine how much that would change the nba if they brought in relegation and went to a baseball style playoff where you, you can still do a plane you can have your wild card round but have it with like the six seven or whatever you don't need to go down to fucking you don't need 10 teams in a 16 team conference with a, it's just like not it's not even most teams it's two-thirds of the teams it's insane and it's fun when it's happening i will enjoy watching it but zooming way out, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it's an effective way to make the regular season more interesting. Like, I think it makes it, I don't know if it makes it less interesting, but I think it undermines just the overall importance of the regular season. Like, you saw the Miami Heat go on their run. Like, teams, team, like, the NBA is trying to stop teams from like load managing and not caring about the regular season. But then it's like, like the Raptors didn't really miss the plane by that, like that much. If a couple guys stay healthy, which is like kind of insane to think about. Um, like how far, how far let's look really quickly before we, before we end here. Like the Raptors are two spots out of a plane, which I mean, yeah, they're nine wins back. So maybe not the best example. Raptors have 25 wins. Wow. Respect. I remember they were at 23 for the longest time. Where's Port Portland was at 19 forever. They're at 21 now. Shouts to Portland. Lee Ben Osmond's in Portland right now. Told him to go to the Olive Garden. Powell's Books. Hawthorne Avenue. Mississippi Records in Portland is really cool. One of my favorite record stores ever. In the Mississippi area. We've got the golf cart out here. I think that's I think that's time. The golf the golf cart is signaling signaling me back to uh back to bed. So three more games left. And then summertime. David then it's David Johnson documentary time. Then it's T S N documentary time. Maybe bring the podcast back, get some guests. There are some former Raptor players kind of there's two types of former players I would want to get to interview. I've talked about this before, but I would either want to get people like uh, O'Shea Brissett has a YouTube channel. So something like a, a Raptor player that ha a former Raptor that like has a YouTube channel, I think would be a good target because then it's like, OK, we can show some clips from a YouTube channel and like I'll be awkward and weird. It's not going to be like a JJ Redick thing where it's like, hey, O'Shea. You're such a great player. Like I'm gonna be just like, all right, like you were in uh, Lake Louise. Like how cold was the water? Like not that that's I, any improv that I do right now. I, I'm on, like I yeah, I'm still in a coma, so I'm not gonna give you any good lines right now. But it would be like just stupid and weird. So the other type of um, guest that would be great would be like a Ken Birch, who is famously um, not really enjoyed questions about like what's it like to turn 30 so that could be really fun just make it extremely awkward um i have some people written down actually i got rod black following me now on twitter which is he did the first ever um grizzly game ever so he could be a he's got a good voice you know he worked at tsn longer than i've been alive so and he left TSN or they parted ways mutually. So could maybe do some role playing, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm the, f I'm day one at TSN. Let's do, let's do a Malachi farting video and Rod Black, you'd be, you'd be the program director, the PD who went to 
sports broadcasting journalism school, but didn't have the juice to be on the microphone. So now they're behind the scenes making creative decisions. You'd be one of those guys in this situation. And then I just pitch all my stupid video ideas. Like that could be a fun segment. Um, who else? We got, I got a little, uh, I got a little list going of Kobe Simmons. Okay. Try to, <laughs> could try to get, uh, could try to get Kobe Simmons. He has a clothing company. Um, it's like Jesus stuff. It's a lot of like Jesus clothing. So that could be interesting to riff on. Rondé Hollis Jefferson would be great. He's got an online store coming soon. So that could be, that could be good. Akil Augustine could be good. Not that he's a former player. Oren Weisfeld, not that you know, former, former uh, NBA player, Oren Weisfeld is writing a book. So I just asked them like the dumbest questions about their book. Like what kind of paper are you going to be using? What font is going to be? No, don't. Actually, that's terrible. Anything that I, anything creative that I come up with right now is going to suck. So I shouldn't even. Um, Pill C. Gils just turned up on the golf cart. All right. I guess we're staying a few minutes longer then. I don't see them though. Are they on the golf cart right now? Folks, we might, we might need to remain, uh, remain in this space a little bit longer. White shirt. Is white shirt going to get excited? What's white, what's white shirt all about here? And what's his, what's his motive? People aren't dancing anymore. Um, I don't see the gills on the golf cart. Can we, can we, can we get a little, what kind of music? They're, they're dancing like, uh, Pulp Fiction. Like they're doing like the twist, but the guy has an acoustic guitar. This is, we are in Florida for this post game show. So, um, who knows, but trash clips is Terrence Ross streams and has a YouTube channel. Perfect. Let me write that down. Uh, he also didn't he have, he's put some stuff out about like lizard people. That could be really funny. Um, kind of on that tip of like pressures that she was saying, people have never been to the moon. I'm just writing Terrence. Terrence Ross streams, Mr. 51 points. Uh, could talk about the, again, this is going to be a horrible idea because I'm really tired, but talk about the spiritual, if there's any kind of uh, spiritual significance to uh, 51. Like Kyrie's all about 11. Is there a 51? Pill, I think you were lying to me. I don't know if those are gifts. I think those are. Um, I think those are younger people and a guy with a black hat. I don't see any main characters here. That's the big, that's the big disappointment. You're always looking for main characters. I mean, camouflage lady, I can't even see her really for the camo. I think the white shirt guy had kind of some, where did he go? Potential. This guy standing here awkwardly with his beer. Kind of like him. He could be a main character maybe if I had more juice going. Um, they're going right to the ladies' bathroom. So they came from the golf cart to the ladies' washroom, definitely doing some cocaine, maybe talking about how cool Michael Porter Jr. is while they're doing cocaine bumps. But the security guy, some of the security guys here are, like, they should be working out um, Grady Dick in the off season. But, yeah, I think that's, we hit an hour on this, wow. So yeah, three more games left. And then there were three.